please stand.
Good afternoon. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
Seems like every time I look around, we burn somebody we know of, somebody close to us. But uh, it's God's will, y'all. Amen. Amen. We don't know when we're going or how we're going. Or I don't know nobody that's prepared for it. Amen. So I'm going to try to do this here for the family and the gentlemen and everybody. When the cold wind blows, ooh, I will be there. I have got to be there. Do you have a mother? <coughs> She's gone. Ooh, do you have a father? He's gone to may have some friend who went before you. But when they cry, Lord of high, ooh, I will be there. I have got to be there. <coughs> Do you have a brother? He's gone. Ooh, do you have a sister? She's gone too. May have some friend who went before you. But when they cry, Lord up high, ooh, I will be there. I've got to be there. That's um, touching to me, and I wish I could put more to it, but that's all this thing. So, um, um, y'all love one another and be safe, and like I say, love God, because He's the beginning and the end. So, His word is, is bond. Thank you. Amen. He's in a better place, though. Believe that. I mean, no more work. You know, Lord said, the word of God tells us that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Yes, and right now, we, we may be in that nighttime hour, but understand, understand, joy is going to come in the morning. Mm -hmm. There's joy coming. And we don't know if the morning is going to be tomorrow morning or if it's going to be the week after next, or if it's going to be next year. But we know that joy is coming. Mm -hmm. That's the hope we must hold on to. And for those of us who are Christians, know that we will see Juma again. Amen. And, and we should hold on to that. You know, we don't know when, but we will see him again because he found a place in heaven. God has a place for him. Next, we're going to read the obituary silently. And then after that, we'll have the acknowledgement from Byron Martin. faces, God has truly blessed each and every one of us in this room. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Health, obviously very important. I hope that a lot of you are fully vaccinated because I want you all in this room to live a full life. Amen. Now we're here to celebrate the life and the legacy of Juma Jai, a man who has impacted, I would assume everyone in this room's life one way or the other. This is a phenomenal man. I can say to my own testimony because he has helped me through every situation, every encounter, everything that I've been through in my life. And looking at all of you today, there's a lot of familiar faces and a lot of unfamiliar faces, but we're all here because of this man here. Amen. <sighs> this, okay. And I'll read this announcement before I, I get into sharing what I what I feel. But um, I guess uh, there's an announcement from St. Stephen Church, um, and I'm going to read the, the announcement now. We, the members of the St. Stephen Baptist Church, send our heartfelt condolences as you remember and celebrate the life of Mr. Juma Jai. To Sister Demetria Montgomery and Brother David Cathy, may you find strength in knowing that your St. Stephen Baptist Church family is here for you, and you are in our thoughts and also our prayers. Be encouraged, family, through the Word of God as it is written. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Uh, <laughs> there is so much that I can say about, about Juma. I mean, this man can literally talk his way out of any situation, and this man can literally talk his way to make sure that you know, and obviously, as it shows here, that U of L is the best basketball team out there. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, <laughs> if he wanted to talk about the former president, he had no idea. He had no. He had no reason to hold back <laughs> to talk about him <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of you know I don't know if he's had a conversation with a lot of you about it but he always wondered where that stimulus resided because he needed that <laughs> like a lot of us right now through this pandemic <laughs> some of the biggest lessons I've learned just growing up with him is things that I took away that he taught me indirectly, such as his tools. If you know Mr. Juma, you know that he is prideful on all of his items, especially his tools. You better put it back exactly the way he had it. So growing up, never was allowed to touch him, ever. None of us were. But over time, I saw him passing down that torch to me because at one point, he allowed me to just hold one, hold a wrench. <laughs> And eventually, he let me use all of his tools, and that was just a blessing to me because he has taught me so much about life, how to maneuver through life, how to hold it down, how to be a good person, and just remember to share the love with everybody else around you because you never know when it's your time to go. So the kind of legacy you leave behind will really show how much people care about you and seeing everybody in this room. This is a full room of people. It really shows that this man had a true impact on everybody here. Oh. <laughs> One more thing. Um, I'm really going to miss my grandmother and Juma's interaction because it was it was something that, oof, if this is what 30 years of being together looks like, I could deal with it. I would always hear them scream each other's name. They wouldn't even be able to hear each other. I would always hear them like, Juma! Joe! <laughs> oh yeah. yeah what is going on? <laughs> and I have to listen to that. <laughs> but one thing I do know is that they truly love each other and people who yell at each other like that <laughs> it just shows me that um I gotta be strong minded to, to live and and walk in their foot in footsteps. Yes. <sighs> now our family each of us lost somebody that was very significant and important to all of us here. And those are just my stories. I'm sure that there are plenty of stories out there. And if anybody would like to 
have a few remarks. I see uh, my sister Brittany back there ready to speak now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. back with George, uh, Anthony, Juma, <laughs> a lot of names, <laughs> and more like family, you know, we, we, we were neighbors, and when you're the neighbors so long, you become families, and uh, I mean, our mothers and fathers, I mean, never no problem, you know, I mean, had one problem, you know, I mean, I was running through the yards and the dog bit me, and I still got that mark to show that. <laughs> but outside of that, I mean, I know this thing, I mean, looking out here in the audience, I mean, it's more U of L fans out here than it was at the game this year. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mean, God is the best of planners and the best of knowers. You know, his plan never fails, and he knows everything. I mean, Anthony left us at an a honorary time for us, but for God, it was right on time. Mm -hmm. you know, it was like the two little boys that that was standing on the shore. They go there every day, and as the boat go by, they wave at the captain. So one day, the one little boy told, told, told his buddy, he said, you know, he said, tomorrow, he said, that boat's gonna come by and pick me up. So the next day, the boat came by and he pulled over to the shore and he called him on. And before he went on, he turned around and he looked at his buddy, his buddy said, but how'd you know? He said, I forgot to tell you, my father is the captain of that ship. <laughs> he told me he was coming to get me. <laughs> so we know when Anthony you know, that his father told him it was time to go. And I'm sure, being George, being what he is, he had no arguments. He turned around and he's waving to all of us because he's gone. Thank you. Started two minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all know him as Juma. 
I knew him as George. <laughs> and he's gonna always be George to me. I'm gonna tell y'all something about George. It wasn't too long before I got out of the army. I rolled down 38th Street, seen George sitting on the porch. George slimmed down tremendously. I'm like, I pulled over, I said, hey, George, how you lose so much weight? He said, I start running. I said, well, you know, we can get together and run sometime. He said, okay. And now, the look on this program is the look he gave me. He said, okay. <laughs> so uh, we stayed on Lockwood. George met me on Lockwood, and we went down to Shawnee Park. He had his headphones on. So uh, George said, uh, now, we're going to run around Shawnee two times, and then hit Chickasaw. I said, okay, we can do that. He said, now, don't worry about my pace. You just concentrate on yours. <laughs> so we, we start running, you know. I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is all right. I can deal with this. You know, army, I can do two miles. So we go around two times. Then we go out to Shawnee Park, go on Chickasaw. George ain't look back. Next thing you know, I'm steady at my pace. And George just started like the tortoise in the hair on Bugs Bunny. <laughs> he just take off, but he getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> I'm like, hey. Uh, so George kept going, and I turned around one the other way. <laughs> I went home. Next thing I know, I'm at home about 10 minutes. Here come George coming down the street. I said, hey, George. I said, uh, he said, what happened to you? I said, man, I can't keep up with you. <laughs> so, uh, he said, uh, man, he said, he said, this ain't nothing. I said, what you mean? Uh, he said, man, I usually leave from 38th Street and go to 2nd Street, go across the bridge, come back. I said, do you stop? He said, when I get home. <laughs> so, uh, and I looked at him, I said, you ain't tell me you, you don't run marathons or nothing. And he gave me that look. You didn't ask either. <laughs> so, uh, but my, my point is, George ran a good race. And he finished it. It was sooner than we expected. But we know what, no, no time, no hour or day. But George was ready. So we, we just need to celebrate the times that we had with him. Because I, I can tell you about the time that the gut bugging and the, the bus stop. But uh, me, but I, I mean, it wasn't nothing bad. We, George was a good person to be around. And I'm always loving and I'm always missing. Amen. You know, George had an impact on everybody's lives. I was talking to one of my cousins uh, yesterday uh, who, who, who lives in Boston, D.C., and she reminded me as kids, George, George Anthony Juma, um, he, he, he DJ played music, so I think that you know many of us younger got our love for music for him. He, he played music all the time, you know, and DJ just was second nature. He really was a good guy. We will now have a solo from Buford Dwayne Pullum, and after that, then we'll have a poem from uh, Crystal Evans. Amen. Amen.
time we have is borrowed. The time we share will be kept. Tomorrow is not promised, and yesterday will not be forgot. We all wish we had more time with you. Thank you for the time you spent. Each heart you touched, you left to print. You led us in prayer and loved being around family. Just the other day, we were all laughing and smiling. Time can be tricky. Time can be funny. Thank you for the time we brought with you and from you. You will always be remembered. Mr. Juma, we love you. Thank you. There's a lot that can be said about Juma. Um, <clears throat> personally, I just remember he always had an infectious smile, uh, always laughing, always in a good spirit. I don't recall ever seeing him uh, really that angry, but then, you know, when we was around, I, we were around each other during good times. I'm going to go ahead and get to the uh, eulogy, uh, try not to take too much of your time, amen. Um, First of all, just let me say that I never knew whether to call him George or Anthony. And, and I really thought his name was either George Anthony or Anthony George, because half the family called him George, other half called him Anthony. And it wasn't until this week when I was talking to the media that I found out that George was not his given name. <laughs> and the story behind George was that he had, and, and Quinn helped me with this, he had some shoes as a child that had buckles on them, and they th they said he was wearing George Washington shoes. <laughs> so as, as a kid, a kid, they, they continued to call him George, you know, for the rest of his life. <laughs> It's amazing how nicknames stick with us and stay with us. Uh, when I was announcing my sister, I apologized. I said, the program says Maria Lee, but all my life, I've called her Nikki Lee. <laughs> so the names stick with us. I'm going to take for, for a brief moment the text. Look at the text, 1 Corinthians 15, 55, or 50 through 55. And I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. 
Um, it's a very easy to read translation, uh, so it makes it pretty plain what the scripture, what the writer uh, is saying. So 1 Corinthians 15, <laughs> verses 50 through 55, <laughs> and we find these words written. What I'm saying to brothers and sisters is that our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but will be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trump is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to life again, and those who are living will be transformed. For our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Then, when our dying bodies have been transformed into the bodies that will never die, the scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory, O oh death, where is your victory, O oh death, where is your sting? Let me just whisper a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this day. And dear, Heavenly Father, though it's a sad occasion, we thank you for this occasion. Dear Father, for we know that one of our loved ones have joined you in the heavenly and with the heavenly host in heaven. Dear Father, we will be sad. We will miss him. We were hurt for a while, and we know that you have allowed the Holy Spirit to come to comfort us. Please comfort us as we walk through these trying days that lie ahead of us. Lord, we ask that something be said today that will inspire us and help us to move forward from this moment on and to remember that you are our Lord and our Savior. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Juma Jai. He took a bold step many years ago by shedding his birth name, the name that his parents had given him of Anthony Lamont Kathy, and taking on a new name. Now, before I bore you to death, I bore you to sleep, I would like to do something, a little interaction between us and you, because the significance of a name change is important. And it's happened quite often, so I would like for us to just look at some of the people in history who have changed their names. So I will give the birth name I would ask that you would respond with the name was that it was changed to. I'm gonna start with an easy one. Cassius Marcellus Clay Jr. Oh, yeah. All right, all right, amen, amen. Uh, Annie Mae Bullock. All right, all right. <laughs> Karen Elaine Johnson. Mm -hmm. Whoopi Goldberg. Oh. <laughs> William Jefferson Bly. <laughs> Bill Clinton. Oh, Michael Martin Luther King Jr. I gave it away. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr. His name was changed. Uh, Malcolm Little. Malcolm X. Uh, Lou Alcinda. I, I knew that was coming from the back. <laughs> Uh, the name change, name change is something that some people have uh, taken on and use. There's about there's many reasons why people will change their name. Five of the top ten reasons why people will change their name is that they first of all don't like the birth name given to them. Uh, the second, another reason is that they change their name uh, because of a marriage or a divorce. You know, change it to the married name and then to divorce. Some desire to lose. Uh, I have a more or less ethnic name. So you'll find some people, uh, some Asians, when they come here, uh, will change it uh, to a Charles or a more common name just so that they're not identified by their name, by their culture. Uh, some take a political statement, uh, make a political, sta a political statement when they change their name. And some people change their names for religious reasons. Muhammad Ali uh, and uh, uh, Malcolm X changed it for, his was both political and uh, religious. So from my limited understanding, uh, Juma did not change his name for any political reason. Uh, he didn't change his name uh, necessarily because he didn't like his birth name. 
Uh, from what I understand, he changed his name because he did want to separate from what was considered to be a white man's name. And he wanted to take on a more ethical name. In the Bible, there's been people that have changed their names and uh, you may have heard of some. There's Adam, or uh, Abram, who was changed to a Abraham. His wife, Sarah, her name was changed to Sarah. Jacob, his name was changed to Israel. Uh, and, and, and these are people who have, whose names was changed by God. Saul changed his name to Paul, and that's one that a lot of people recognize and remember is that Paul, before he met Christ, he was Saul, the persecutor of Christians. But after meeting Christ, changed his demeanor and started taking on his name, Paul. He actually had both names. Paul was his Roman name and Saul was his Hebrew name. But he started using Paul after he met Jesus. And then Jesus changed the name of Simon, one of his disciples, changed it from Simon to Peter. And he said to Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. A name change usually indicate a change in one's life. Most times people don't just wake up one morning and say, I'm going to change my name and there's nothing significant happened to them. For example, when a woman marries a man, she changes her name to say, I am now no longer a single person, but I now have a partner, someone who I am connected to and changes to his name. So then she becomes associated, a teammate of her husband, and she changes her name. Now, of course, on the back side of that is when she no longer wants to be on that team, she changes her name back through a divorce. Amen? <laughs> Another reason is people change their name is uh, for religious reasons. And, of course, as with Cassius Clay, he changed it when he became a Muslim, Malcolm X, changed it when he became a Muslim he dropped the little which he said was a uh, white man's name his, his master's name so he changed it to X to represent that he is Malcolm Malcolm X uh, Juma changed his name when he had when, when you know there was a change in his life he no longer wanted to be associated with that white man's name as he put it so he, 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 he made a change. And just as he made a change in his name, in our text, we find Paul teaching the church at Corinth about the resurrecting body, which means that there's going to be another change. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to use for just a title for this little bitty message that we all are going to have one last change. Mm -hmm. And we know that on Sunday morning, Juma, experienced his last change. He's no longer in this life. He's been changed and moved on to live with our Father in heaven. Amen? Mm -hmm. So one last change. So Paul is telling us in these in these five verses that I've extracted from 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, is the main point is that this body that we have now cannot live forever. Mm -hmm. This body has to go back to the dirt. Mm -hmm. This body has to be destroyed. It can't live in a place that will last forever. Mm -hmm. So this body must go back. Mm -hmm. So Paul is telling us that we have to put on immortality. We might, we have, we're going to be given a body that we will not have to change again. This body here it's gone. You know, it's going to go back to the dust. But what he has on now, the spiritual body, will last forever. Mm -hmm. And he's there in heaven with Aunt Jeannie, uh, with Mom, with all the other relatives that have gone on. And I, I'm sure on Sunday morning, when, when, when he left this place, when he made that one last change, that, that everybody there in heaven was celebrating and having a wonderful time, mm -hmm. knowing that he was in a much better place than he'll ever be. So, so death is swallowed in, up in victory. Mm -hmm. Death has lost its sting. He no longer has to worry about any of that. When, when we, when we, when we um, make that last change, we, when we make that last change, that one last change, we don't have to worry about anything else. That's right. You know, those that are left behind have a lot of things to worry about. 
You know, in this life, we change a lot of things. We change our names. We change our minds. And, and sometimes that's not such a bad thing, but it's a good thing. Um, we change our address. We change our, we can change our physical body. There's a lot of things in this life we can change. And quite often, we do change when it comes to our physical appearance. You know, we can change the way we look. Some days, some people have long hair. Some days they have short hair. Some days they have nappy hair. Some days they have straight hair. Some days they don't have eyelashes. Some days they have long eyelashes. Some days we'll run into somebody that we knew from childhood who had brown eyes, but now they have hazel eyes. Sometimes, so we can make a lot of physical changes in our lives, but there's one last change uh -huh. that we'll all make, uh -huh. and that's when we lay down for the last time. You know, we can change our partners. And it's funny, I was talking to a guy the other day, a good friend of mine, and we were at the ball field, and he pointed out a guy, he said, uh, that guy there, he has a new wife every two years. <laughs> I said, what? Yeah, 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 he, he, every two or three years, he get a new wife. I said, how does he do that? He said, look, I don't know, that, that's their religion. He said, but they have a, he has a new wife every two or three years. So he went over and was talking to him. And man's like, man, look, I don't take them to the courthouse. He said, we get married at my house, and we stay together for a couple years, and then we move, then we move on. You know, he trades he trade in his wife as often as he buys a new car. We can change a lot of things in this life. But there's going to be one last change. And this afternoon, if, if there's nothing else you remember, is that we are going to make one last change from this life to the next life. You know, and that means we have one more move. I was listening to Reverend, the, the late Reverend Dr. Charles Booth, and he was telling the story of a young man who went to the uh, National Museum of Art in Washington, D.C. And he said when this young man went into the museum, he was captured. His attention was captured by a painting on the wall that said, Checkmate. And the young man stood there, not one hour, not two hours, not three hours, but just stood there. And the guard walked by several times to ask him if everything was all right. And the young man, yeah, everything's fine. And he studied this picture. And the picture was a younger man sitting across from an old evil, the old evil devil playing chess. And the devil had said to the young man, checkmate. But this young man who was admiring the picture just kept staring. And the, the guard came back and said, you know, we'll be closing in two hours. And he kept, he kept, he kept staring at it. And about five minutes before the museum was going to close, the young man staring at the picture said, it's a lie. He has one more move. And understand this, church, that we have one more move. No matter what your situation is, no matter how bad things may seem right now, you have one more move. We have one more move, move in Christ. He will get you through whatever you're going through. He's going to see you through whatever your trials may be. You have one more move. Don't give up. Whatever your struggles may be, you have one more move in Jesus Christ. Just remember that when this life is over, we're going to all fly away. We're going to be with our Father in heaven. Juma is gone. He don't have to worry about not narrowing more bills. He don't have to worry about LG&E. He don't have to worry about uh, the phone bill, whether it's AT&T or whether it's Sprint or whoever. He don't have to worry about the mortgage. He don't have to worry about anything. All his worries and cares are gone. And he's resting assured right now with our Heavenly Father in heaven. And we will see him again if we've committed our life to Christ. We, we got to give ourselves to Christ to be with our family in heaven. That's right. He's going to be all right. Change, one last change is what he's made, and we're all going to make that change. Mm -hmm. Show your family love. Show your friends love. Don't <laughs> hold anything. We have to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Mm -hmm. and, and, and holding on to God's unchanging hand, then we know that everything is going to be all right.
Romans 8, 28 tells us all things work together for the good of them that uh -huh. love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Now, someone may say, preacher, how is all things working together good when he's gone and we're left by? I can't answer those questions. That's for you and God to figure out. But all things, God has promised all things will work together for our good. We need to put our hope in Jesus Christ. My hope is built on nothing less than the blood of Jesus and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. On Christ, <coughs> you, can put your, you can put your confidence in you, but you will fail. You can put your confidence in and money, it will fail. You can put confidence in your job, they will back up and leave. You can put confidence in a whole lot of things. But I'm telling you, unless you put your, Christ, your confidence in Christ, that your hopes be in Christ, all else will fail. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Again, we have one last move to make. And that's leaving this place to go be with our Heavenly Father. There's going to be some tough days ahead of each and every one of us. But we have to put our hands in God's hand. Trust Him. Depend on Him. Lean on Him. Understand because others will fail us and let us down. But God has never yes. failed us. He's seen us through a lot of stuff. Yes. You know, yes. We've had hurt and pain like this before and we'll have it again. But we have to trust and depend on Jesus. Man. Juma's gone to be in a better place. Amen. And one day we will be there. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Our Father, our God, we thank you for all your wonderful blessings. Dear Father, we thank you for the confidence that we have in you. Dear Father, we pray that you order our steps. We pray, oh Lord, that you lead us and guide us. We pray that you comfort us, oh Lord, in all that we do. Lord, just wrap your loving arms of concern around this family, allow this family to grow closer together in these tough times. Let them know that they have each other to support each other. Lord, just be all that we need you to be, because you are an awesome God. We love you, we adore you, and we magnify your glory, glorious name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.